general scan of the whole spine. Okay, a general scan of the spine is a quick assessment of the spine, looking for places that need further evaluation. Uh, we're going to bend in the pelvis and we're going to work our way up to the cervical spine because on your examination, one of the questions will probably be to perform a general scan in either the seated and or the prone position. Uh, there are many different variations. I'll go around a couple. There are some people who like to use bilateral thumb contacts. In that case, I'm going to go up the spine using those. If you use a bilateral thumb contact, what you'd like to do is you want to contact the sacral base just medial to the PSIS. From here, I'm going to kind of the iliac crest, windshield wiper down to the PSIS. From here, I'm going to come just medially in the sacral base bilaterally on both sides. Doctor's position is you want to be able to get your body weight evenly spaced, evenly positioned over your two hand contacts. I want to lean my body weight in, letting my body weight bring the joint to pretension. What you're going to feel is the joint's going to give, 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 and then you're just going to feel this back pressure. Once you have the joint in pretension, whether you want to spring in one side or want to spring in both sides bilaterally, let your body weight just drift easily into these joints an eighth of an inch and feel the resiliency, the give and the recoil. If it's springy, meaning that it gives and recoils, the joints are bilaterally on both sides, it means the joint is doing well, in which case move on. If you feel one side more resistant than the other, we'll consider to be the side, that side of more resistance be the side of dysfunction. We'll look into those a little bit later. The classical contact points in the, in the lumbar spine is going to be the mammillary processes. We know that the mammillary processes are adjacent to the inner spaces, so it's really just a question of feeling the inner spaces and basically leaning, compressing the overlying tissue, bringing the joint to pretension, and springing with your body weight. The lumbar spine, we're going to be springing for the most part, peed away, getting our body weight peed away to the segment and springing through. Again, if you want to spring one side or the other or both at the same time, that's entirely up to you. As you get into the thoracic spine, our contact points are going to change. They're going to change to the TVPs. The only difference in the thoracic spine, instead of the joints being the sagittal plane, they become big to come about 60 degrees to the transverse plane and off slightly about 20 degrees to the coronal plane. So the only difference to be in the facet joints is taking your thumb contacts. We're going to come in from posterior to, in, posterior to anterior and from inferior to superior at about a 60 degree angle to the curve and the location. Bringing the joints to pretension, springing with your body weight, not with your hands. Obviously the further up you come in the spine because of the change in the curvature, it looks like I'm coming P to A but I'm still roughly 60 degrees to the plane of the curve. When you get up into the cervical spine, we're going to go from the transverse processes to the articular processes of the cervical spine. Like you did with Browning's class, Dr. Browning's class, we're going to take a thumb and an index or a thumb and a middle finger, that's entirely up to you, and we're going to compress the overlying tissue, and from here, the planes of the facets in the cervical spine are about 45 degrees, so that's the way that we're going to push into them. I first compress the overlying tissue until I feel a degree of pretension, and then from there I can lightly spring through, P to A and slightly I to S. If you'd like, you can also reinforce your contacts with the other hand, unless you have a cup of coffee here. Ah, just kidding, I'm going for the joke. Springing through. All the way up, for the most part pushing forth. To those who like to use a more broad-based contact, coming back down over here, the classic for this is going to be taking the PSIS as your contact, taking a bilateral thenar eminence contact. So I'm going to take a palpate to the PSIS, take my thenar eminences, basically put them over the PSIS because that's going to put you right over the SI joint. Once again, get your body weight, basically get your body weight over your hands, balance them in between your hands, let your body weight bring the joint to pretension. Let your body weight lightly spring through. For the spine, if you use a midline contact, I would recommend you some, some any place in your hand that's relatively soft and padded. Reinforce it with your other hand. Lean into the spine to feel pretension, and then just spring through lightly with your body weight. These tend to cover a little bit more, more of a region than using your thumb contacts and going segment by segment. So realize that if you find an area that needs further evaluation, you might have to explore two or three segments in that region of your hand contact. Hey, I got a release. Two.
Remember to let your body weight do the work for you. The cervical spine was the same as we did last time before. Uh, an alternative that we offered the last time was one that's Motion Palpation Institute or MPI is using. It's called the Sphinx position. On the test, this is entirely up to you. You would ask your patient to basically go into a television watching position. They would place their elbows on this pad. I'll do it because obviously this skeleton doesn't have any. But I'd ask them to take their elbows and place them up on the thoracic pad, not on the cervical pad, cupping their chin, letting their back relax. From here, I'll use it as a demonstration over here. Obviously, you won't be holding your patient's neck. But from here, matter of fact, if I could, could I have you hold this person's neck? From here, since you're extending the spine, our line of drive is going to be more P to A and slightly S to I. To that end, your superior hand has a natural inclination. Once again, just take a soft padded contact, get your body weight up over the midline, lean in until you feel pretension, and then just lightly spring. We can use a sphinx position all the way down the spine right into the sacrum. The only thing we'd have to do differently would be the cervical spine, which you could follow that up with. Whether you want to lead with the cervical spine or follow it up, doesn't make it really make a difference. This is good for the thoracics and the lumbars. Then the SI joints I would just do normally. This is called a sphinx, and that is your choice. Boom. And then once again, I'd get into the SI joints the same way I did beforehand, and the cervical spine. And that would be a general scan of the thoracic spine, or the general scan of the spine in a prone position. My apologies. Very good.